In World War II, the British used the Bren gun as their standard section light machine gun, and the Germans had something called the MG34, which was later replaced by the MG42, which was essentially the same weapon but a cheaper, easier to make version. And uh, I'm going to be calling it the Spandau, by the way, because uh, that's what people at the time called it. Now, I know modern revisionists and pedants will say, ah, technically it wasn't a Spandau, it wasn't made at the Spandau factory. You're quite right. Um, but the, since everyone at the time called it the Spandau, and Spandau is a much better word, I'm going to call it that. I hope you can forgive me. So, Bren gun versus Spandau. Which was better? Now, a hell of a lot has been written and said about how the Bren gun was rubbish and the Spandau was just ace. By and large, if any piece of equipment was used by the Germans, uh, then people will say that it was just ace because it was German and that's somehow just ace. Um, in fact, a lot of German equipment had a lot of problems and a lot of British equipment was really good. Um, and it remains the case that the Bren gun was used right the way to the end of the war and well beyond. In fact, it was discontinued completely, I think, in the British Army in something bizarre like 2006. They were still using them, using them in the Falklands War in 1982, and they are still today making Bren guns. So if Bren guns were no good, they wouldn't have lasted the test of time, would they? Um, and not everyone copied the MG34. Sorry, the Spandau. I said I was going to call it a Spandau, never mind. Um, no, but not everyone copied that after the war. So if it was so flipping marvellous, why didn't everyone go over to using that? So, what were the differences between these two weapons? Well, the Spandau was terrifying. I mean, not that it's exactly uh, you know, a wonderful uh, thing to be shot at by a Bren, but it was terrifying to be shot at by a Spandau. They sprayed bullets at something like 1,200 rounds a minute. So fast, in fact, that you didn't hear distinct rounds being fired at you. There was just this constant noise of bullets whizzing past you. Uh, some people describe the sound as uh, ripping calico or linoleum. I've even heard them referred to as linoleum guns or burp guns. They sound a bit like a zip being done up faster, uh, fast. It's sort of a <laughs> noise, whereas with a Bren gun you could hear da, 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 da. you could hear the individual rounds being fired. And not only did they fire so much faster, but they sprayed out about the place. The Spandau was not an accurate weapon. It was an area denial weapon, if you like. So there you are, you're in a, in a hedge, and you can see across this field there's another hedge, and in, in the next field you can see a lot of guys are launching an attack. So you spray, uh, you spray that field with a load of rounds from your Spandau, and everyone in that field feels in danger. There are there are bullets flying all over the shop. You don't know where the next one's going to be. It could be it's got heading straight for you. So ah, you throw yourself onto the deck. You are suppressed. And that attack grinds to a halt. So in defense, Spandals are really good because you can make an attack by the enemy grind to a halt in a way that you can't really with a Bren gun because the Bren gun was very accurate. It was as accurate as a rifle. They were even occasionally used for sniping on when you set them to single, single uh, shot. Um, and if you did fire a burst, da, 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 all those would go to the same point. So you couldn't suppress an entire field. And even if you did fire very effectively, because you only had 20, about 27, 28 rounds typically in the, uh, in the magazine, you'd have to stop to reload pretty soon. So they just weren't as devastating in defense. So what's so great about Brens then? Um, well, one is they are really accurate and reliable, you could change the barrels very quickly, um, and you could use them in attack so much more readily because they were easy to pick up and carry. You could fire them from the hip or you could fire them like a, a, a rifle from the shoulder, again, very accurately. Um, I've, seen, uh, I've seen video of someone trying to fire a Spandau. Uh, he puts it down uh, by his center of gravity, somewhere around waist height, leans into it, braces himself, and fires, and he just goes, Shh, he just pushed back by this constant force of uh, of, uh, of of bullets. Um, you couldn't really use them very effectively in close combats, but you could go into a house with a Bren gun and start shooting about the place. Uh, you could accompany your troops into battle, and you could also shoot them in, give them covering fire, right to the last minute. So, for instance, a load of infantry, your infantry, are going to make an attack coming in from the side. You put the Bren gun here 
and this is where the enemy are and you want to suppress them. So you fire da, 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 at the enemy to suppress them whilst your guys come right in. You guys get right close to him, right right close up to the, the enemy and then they start throwing in grenades and so forth and in with the bayonets and the job's done. But if you're spraying bullets all over the place really fast, you can't give that, that accuracy of covering fire to your guys. Um, so the British way of putting a flank uh, a flanking Bren and going in uh, with with the guys, uh, the infantry at right angles, that didn't really work so well for the Germans who had to mount frontal attacks um, because of that inaccuracy. Uh, Rifleman Bowlby in The Recollections of Rifleman Bowlby, uh, which is a book I read very recently, he describes how uh, during an attack he tried to escape a Spandau's fire uh, by getting behind a hedge that he saw and he ran towards the hedge and he realised I'm not going to make it, I'm not going to get to the hedge, but he saw a ditch in front of the hedge, dived into it only to find out that in fact it wasn't a ditch, it was just one inch deep and he was lying face down 80 yards away from a Spandau in full view of it and they fired loads and loads of bullets at him, all of which missed and he was lying there for about three quarters of an hour, every few minutes they gave him a burst and he was fine at the end of it, they never hit him. If they'd been using a Bren, he would have been dead. Um, so when you do suppress uh, the enemy and they have gone down to ground, you could then start picking people off with a Bren in a way that you can't with a Spandau because though it's brilliant at suppressing a large area, it's not good at attacking an individual point. Um, so which is better then? Well, Sidney Jarry in 19 Platoon, he said that in defence the Spandau was way better as an individual weapon. Uh, Sidney Jarry's 19 Platoon, by the way, highly recommended book, which is actually a standard text uh, in Sandhurst, the officer training school for the British Army. Um, yes, he said that if you're going up against enemy who are firing Spandaus at you, they're so terrifying and uh, they are just so much more effective than a Bren. But in attack, a Bren gun is at least as good. And he also noted, as do other writers, that the Germans fought quite differently. He never Sidney Jarry, in all his experience as an infantry platoon leader, he said he never ever saw the Germans fire their rifles. They relied entirely on the section machine gun. So a German section essentially was a Spandau team and some riflemen whose job was to protect the Spandau team and keep it supplied with ammunition, which was no small feat because it tore through ammunition. You had to carry a huge amount of ammunition, great big ammunition. You see Germans uh, advancing, they're all carrying these great big ammunition boxes with belts of 250 rounds in and they're all clomping down the street carrying these things because they know that uh, they're going to they're gonna need to supply their section machine gun. Um, so they pretty much didn't do any fighting of their own, which meant that the total firepower of the section wasn't so very different actually because you've got a Spandau firing rather than one Bren gun and five uh, Lienfield rifles. And of course, the more weapons that are being fired, the more pairs of eyes there are behind, the more angles they can cover, the more likely they are to spot some enemy somewhere. So in fact, it's another different and, and in some ways better way to fight to have less firepower dispersed amongst a greater number of men rather than rely on this one gun. And again, Sidney Jarry and others Note again and again that if a German section lost its machine gun for whatever reason, that the weapon jammed or the gunners were killed or whatever, as soon as that gun was knocked out of action, the fight just went out of the section. They just thought, oh, well, my job is supplying and guarding that thing and it's, it's gone, so uh, I don't like it anymore. Oh, I feel safe when that thing is firing and making its very loud noise and spraying bullets about the place. I now don't feel safe. And they left. So if you could defeat just one weapon in the whole section, you could defeat the section. Um, so, which was better? Neither was entirely better. They were different. In defence, the Spandau uh, could be really, really frightening. Uh, but in attack, the Bren was at least as good. And let's not forget that the British consistently won. From 1944, the Normandy landings onwards, Every single day, the British Army and the Allies in general, but I'm using the example of the British, advanced. Sometimes it was only a few hundred yards in a day, other days it was miles. The Germans had shortening supply lines, the advantage of defence, supposedly terrific equipment, very well trained and motivated troops, etc, 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 and yet they consistently lost. 
Well, if the Bren wasn't good at its job, then that wouldn't have been true, would it? Oh, there was something else I meant to say, and that is that the British did actually experiment with their own equivalent of the Spandau. It was called the Vickers K-Gun, a gun that uh, could fire very fast and was very uh, useful for anti-aircraft use, but wasn't normally used as a section machine gun, but was sometimes issued to specialist troops like commandos, uh, the SAS Long Range Desert Patrol, uh, scouting units and so forth. But for the ordinary infantrymen, it wasn't found to be the way they wanted to fight. What would happen is that uh, the section machine gun would go forward, the men would go forward, they'd spray bullets about the place, it would be all terribly successful, let's say, and then they'd run out of ammunition. And then the attack would grind to a halt. If you're attacking, that's a huge problem. Now, if you're defending, you can sit, you can sit tight and spray away and have a team of guys supplying you with ammunition and it's not so bad. But if you're going forwards, going further and further away, lengthening your lines of supply and you run out of ammunition, then what do you do? Do you fall back? In which case, all that ground you've gained has been wasted, all that work has been wasted, the enemy will just infiltrate forwards and retake it. Or do you sit tight where you are with no bullets to defend yourself and hope that other men will go back and risk their lives to bring uh, ammunition forwards? Um, they did try it and they found that it just wasn't for them. <laughs>